You play one on Ooh. Oh, that's the oh, sham god. Yeah, that's, that's the sham, the sham god. god. Yeah, or the the whip El Latigo. I made a video about it. So I remember <laughs> all the names for it. We have one god, and his name is Bodroga. Mm. I only know sex, droga, Bodroga. Sex, drugs, and Bodroga. Droga. That wasn't Friend. too too hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, Pesic is a cool guy. <laughs> really that <laughs> <laughs> that's really? your statement okay. okay what's up guys welcome to another episode of b and retro uh once again your hosts gitis ritis and donatas we're back to watch retro games and this time we're going back 21 years in time to go back to 2002 fiba world championship quarterfinal between usa and yugoslavia a country that literally does not exist anymore so that's how far we're taking it back and we're taking it that far back because of Donatas, who chose that game. Could you tell us why? Because we're approaching the World Cup and uh, Serbia is one of the powerhouses of the national team competitions. And 2002 World Cup was the last time Serbians won the gold medal. And Svetislav Pesic, who is currently the head coach of this national team, was the, you know, the head coach of that team, which won the gold medals. And Again, we're approaching the World Cup where Serbian is one of the favorites to win the gold if Nikola Jokic will play. Where Team USA is not that Team USA which we're used to uh, to see with the brightest stars on the national team. So because of all these reasons, it just makes sense to review the game. I think for us it will be watching it for the first time. But I think Ritas was old enough to watch it live. Did you watch this game? I don't remember if I particularly watched that game live because uh, 2002 World Cup is not stuck in my memory as much as some other tournaments. Lithuania was not participating. That probably was the first competition after the Sydney Olympics where we could sense that Team USA is becoming more vulnerable. They're not taking these tournaments very seriously. And actually this one was held in Indianapolis. Yeah. So people probably expected Team USA to have a better stronger roster but for them basically the main thing was to have as many indiana pacers players as possible that's why they had the 36 year old reggie miller on the team uh they had uh, jermaine o'neill a, a young player at the time anyway it didn't look as scary as the olympic teams uh, yeah. from the past yeah yeah okay so let's just get to it and we'll talk about it more there this particular team usa was pretty vulnerable but at the same time it was still a solid team with nine all-star players, four NBA champions, and it was not like, you know, everybody could beat uh, hosts of the competition, so they were still pretty good. But yeah, but if you compare to 2000s, and then uh, if you compare to 96, then to 2000s, and then to 2002, yeah. it's a steady decline, you know. 98 yeah. was, I think, a uh, lockout year, uh, 99, 98. So that's why there was no NBA they play players. With student yeah, athletes, yeah, yeah. I think that in the first five games of the tournament, Team USA won on average by like 32 points or something. And But just before this game, yes. they lost to Argentina. Yeah. First uh, loss in history after 92 when they introduced NBA players in their um, in their roster. That was the first loss and it was uh, a 58-game win streak that was broken by Argentina. So that was crazy. And this was the next game after. So the pressure was on, you know, to, to not lose another one. This tournament is in, in America, but you can hear the Serbian fans singing. And there are so many empty seats, which just yeah. shows that 20 years ago, uh, Americans didn't take Team USA that seriously, probably. They're playing right now in uh, where uh, Indiana Pacers used to play uh, yeah. that arena. Consico Fieldhouse, right? And it's, yeah, and it's 17,000 capacity, but only 5,300 people attend in this game. So And most of them are Serbian, it seems. Yeah, and, and you can hear chants. We're kind of missing oh. the game, and <laughs> Yugoslavia is already up by They're seven. On well, they have the best shooter Mm. in the world at that time in Peja Stojakovic. 7-0. Also, I wanted to say about uh, Team Yugoslavia, they had six 
players signed to NBA teams. So not all of them had played in the NBA, but after this championship, uh, I think it was Marko Jaric who signed with someone in 2002, and uh, Igor Rakocevic as well yeah. signed with the uh, Timberwolves. So they had six NBA players, which is half of the team, basically. Jaric, I think he played for the Clippers. Yeah, yeah. he signed following season. And what was interesting that we saw Greg Popovich as the assistant coach to George yeah. Carl. And George Carl probably was uh, the best choice for Team USA to coach in the international competition because he was coaching in Madrid, so he knew the mm. European basketball, the rules and everything. Talking about the rosters and the best players, I think Ooh. the leader of uh, Yugoslavia was uh, Stojakovic with 19 points. And I believe P uh, Paul Pierce was also scoring 19 a game uh, in this championship before this game. Divac was also as pivotal as Peja Stojakovic. We just saw this great assist, uh, yeah. this mm. pass it, by Divac. He was already a Nikola Jokic before Nikola Jokic was born. Well, there was some guy named Arvidas. But uh, Divac's contribution was huge, not just on the court, but off the floor. First of all, uh, Coach Pesic played a huge role why Divac uh, decided to join the national team and it happened accidentally first of all basically maybe Divac got the job for Pesic for this uh, mm. uh, Serbian national team because at first uh, now we kind of you know appreciate we recognize coach Pesic as a big-time coach as a very successful coach because especially at that point of his career he was doing really good job they won the Euro basket in 2001 in 2002 they won the World Cup and the following year they won the EuroLeague with Barcelona. But when he was appointed as the head coach, he he was appreciated as the German coach because of his uh, coaching in Germany history. And there were some critics saying, hey, you can go to coach handball, handball team in Germany, what you're doing here. So he's, he had to prove a lot and uh, the way he got the job was basically he was attending uh, Vlade Divac's uh, house on the trip in Sacramento and basically he was making coffee for Dima, Divac uh, every morning <laughs> so he created a great relationship and when Team Yugoslavia needed the head coach uh, I think that Divac played a huge role why they decided okay. to go with uh, Svetislav Pesic. Also about Divac, was, it, was this the year basically after the infamous 2002 Lakers-Kings series uh, Western Finals I believe? Because this is in 2002, so yeah, I think that happened in 2002 as well. Yep. So Stojakovic yep. was also in Kings, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, and yep. Divac, both of these guys. And these are they are coming off after this sort of a revenge against those Americans, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, Vladi, that's how it is. Okay. We already saw some turnovers uh, by Marko Jaric. Classic uh, post hook shot. Yeah. From Divac. And the first quarter. Ends with the time. Okay. I remember the story. It, it was maybe in New York Times uh, where there was this exact quote uh, of the writer of this article that Divac was so dedicated for this game to beat uh, Team USA that he gave up smoke smoking until Sunday. <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> probably that means a lot. Wow. That means a lot. I find it crazy how much, you know, the post game was okay. involved and <laughs> Vlade okay. Divac also shooting threes. I don't remember if he was known for that at all. He was capable. He didn't shoot too many threes. Like in the NBA, I would say he probably averaged like 0.5 per game. And that was like a contested three-pointer. Well, there was no time left, you know, but, but he was shooting appropriately to the times, you know, probably you would say like that for the center. I mean, to if, shoot threes. if he played today... You probably you, should. He would more. hit those Brook Lopez numbers, mm, probably. Mm. It looks like a, like this uncle or this like very uh, serious guy. I, I wouldn't want to have any business with, like any bad business with. Divac? Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in trouble with Divac. You know, but with he was a cigarette. basically a glue guy in the Serbian national team. He was probably so cool the everyone court. was intimidated. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he actually took uh, this whole Serbian team before the tournament for a two-week trip, I think, in the United States, just to get everybody out of mm. Serbia, because just to go get out of this whole pressure, you know, because it's not easy, especially for the European champions to, to, to practice and to be in mm. their home country. So he arranged a lot of things uh, to make this USA trip longer for them. He hired the coach, he got the team together. <laughs> now I he's told playing you, point his center. Look, he's playing point center. His contribution was huge. And he was already a veteran close to retirement. Uh, I think 30 after 34. After this, 34. he okay. had two more seasons in the NBA, I think. Could mm. be. 
And Could be, but he was like averaging 11 points, 7, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists, I think, in Sacramento. He, so he was still okay. Did he go to Lakers after, or am I He tripping? did, but yeah. he, he had injuries and he barely even played there. Mm. Can't beat them, join them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was on the Lakers with Magic Johnson, if you didn't know that. Oh, before? Yep. Yeah. There's so little space on that court. Wow. Mm. <laughs> when we watch basketball in 2023, it's kind of hard to adjust to what we're seeing right now. But There's no space. You play one on Ooh. Oh, that's the sham god. Yeah, that's, that's the sham, the sham god. god. Yeah, or the, the whip, El Latigo. I made a video about it. So I remember <laughs> all the names for it. But yeah, yeah, Badaraga with his. Badaraga was legit NBA material. Just and he never played, right? Never played. Never played. played. And he could have easily. And especially during this tournament, he was at his peak. I think he did the Sham God perfectly on Carmelo Anthony in 2004. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was another famous one. No space. Absolutely no space in the paint. And mid-range shots is, is also weird to see, like... Andre Miller, a point guard. That was his bread and butter, Yeah, because he, he didn't shoot free. Old-school point guard, but he was a good guy. Actually, Linus Glazer, his former teammate from the Denver Nuggets, said that Andre Miller was one of the best teammates he had. I used to hate him in all the NBA Live because and he doesn't 2K shoot free. games. <laughs> his shot is just broken, how, how he shoots. The, That's a foul. The, the, yeah, that, that was weird. That's Who's the ball? Defense. Baron Davis? That's some very solid defense. I think it's Baron Davis. So strange to see guys like Baron Davis, uh, Jermaine O'Neal, Paul Pierce without headband. Probably it was not allowed hair, in FIBA the, basketball. No, the hairline was still ah, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I was thinking about Jermaine O'Neal. I always thought he was brothers with Shaq. Because when I was a child, I used to see them on the game, on the NBA Live. But I think... Are they related? No. They're, no, not related at all. No. Nope. Oh shit. Okay. Ben Wallace and Rashid Wallace, they're also, also not, not related. <laughs> Man. Little did Jermaine O'Neal knew he was gonna participate in Malice at the Palace a few years <laughs> after this. Yeah. Ben Wallace too, right? Yeah, on the other side. And Wallace did Oh Wallace right at our chest. This has potential to be serious if they don't get between. Somebody could really get hurt. Is this Paul Pierce? Ooh, yep. oh my! Dromniak and uh, Radmanovic didn't play. They, they actually they played a little bit. I saw in the they stats. They were coming off uh, their rookie season in Seattle SuperSonics, and there was this story on ESPN, on ESPN by Mark Stein that Pesic was against those young Serbians on NBA teams uh. because he wanted to prove that those Serbians who play in Europe. Uh, as good as those NBAers. So that's such a bad mentality to have, I think, because you're limiting your potential with just some principles in your head. I don't know. Do you have any Koturovic memories, Eritis? I don't, but he's wearing a headband, so it's it, like a it, hairband. So it was not illegal. <laughs> Marko Jaric. Mm. Great another, Marko Jaric. <laughs> Pešić, as you see, he's chewing gum intensively and there was this joke in the Serbian uh, national team camp that uh, based on the distance how far Pesic uh, spat out his uh, chewing gum it it you could say how happy or how angry he is about your game so yeah farther <laughs> it goes it means that the situation is really bad oh, okay I think the Americans scored like eight points from Marco Jaric turnovers. Just turnovers, yeah. That's the problem. Points of turnovers, 12-0. Yeah. And, and eight of those be belong to Marco Jaric. Well, after such a bad quarter for Yugoslavia to be down six or, or eight, or five. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't remember how he's shooting free throws, but yeah, yeah. it's not a bad position to be in. Like, the worst is already behind you. And now you just focus on, on the fourth quarter. This was kind of iconic moment for some reason after this play Bodroga went to Team USA bench and tried to took the towel of Reggie Miller you know because his hands were sweaty mm -hmm. and Reggie was like what the hell is going on <laughs> but I read the interview and Bodroga said that he has only two points by the way okay. he said that you know there was nothing special there's no let's say uh, specific reason why he did that so it was just, just random to situation hands, yeah. yeah didn't think about you know. and the towel was like on the, on Reggie's yeah. knees and he was like oh, what okay. the hell are you doing this was I wouldn't give my towel to opposing team player why should I what a weird uh, why should I share my towel maybe with th this was one of these <laughs> Yugoslavian tricks like I don't know <laughs> like 
Take your own towel. What, <laughs> you guys don't have towels in Yugoslavia? Ooh, another one. Another sham That guard. time, the defender kept his... He stood his ground. The sham god didn't create uh, any advantage. You have to take those shots. Look and at those TV screens on the <laughs> official's <laughs> table. Yeah. Whoa, wow. that's a big shot. There was this famous chant by Serbian fans. I don't know if they were chanting this this one after this game, but it was it sounded like we have one god and his name is Bodroga, something mm. like that. Mm. I only know sex, droga, Bodroga. <laughs> this one is also <laughs> pretty cool. Sex, drugs, and Bodroga. Droga, or is that a f that wasn't friend. too too hard? Oh, okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> Should I translate the word sex to you as well? Serbia is such a tall team. Mm. Like even in the point guard position, shooting guard position, they're very tall. I think Marko Jaric was like two meters and two centimeters. I don't, I don't think he was mm. that tall. I think you're. I remember Gurovic in one interview. He said that we could put up such a tall lineup with him and Divac and just, you know, just check. All I guys mean, were. I, he was a tall point guard, but <laughs> did I'm you guys sure just was... miss what happened on no, the? No, I, I saw Baron a, Davis a, a hit three a three with a foul, a but also one, yep. oh okay, there was a foul. I thought there was no foul. It was a clear foul. Two yeah, meters and one centimeter. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh so. My God. All the starting lineup, uh, all, all guys on the floor were yeah. above they over had two a meters. Big size advantage. He's a number thirteen. I think he's like. It was uh, I think he played in Partizan. Low, I just remember that I think that he went to Barca to replace Jesikaučius mm. because Pesic didn't like Jesikaučius. Does he like him now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pesic is a cool guy. <laughs> really? That. <laughs> That's really? your statement. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go, plus 10, and it's only 6 minutes 40 left to go. Who's that? I think Gurovic. It's Gurovic. Oh, okay. It's motherfucking Gurovic. By the way, there's a very interesting story about Gurovic. Before this tournament, I think he broke his wrist, and he didn't tell anybody because he was a free agent. And two days prior to this game, uh, he extended his contract with Unikaha Malaga. Mm, and so I think that after this game, he had a conversation with the Boston Celtics head coach, and he was about you know to try to pursue him to go to the NBA. But he said, "Hey man, again, again. Gurovic, Gurovic is his broken I'm wrist. Signed. Sopo Bro. Toprokom Treffel legend. <laughs> <laughs> Probably he mo he's the most confident, fearful, mm. cocky player that I know, and one of the most controversial figures as well. Also." Yeah, he is tall then. Yeah, he looks very I didn't tall. think he was that tall, yeah. actually. Oof. Oh, what a mistake. He's good, actually, right? So what? So he hit two three-pointers, now missed one free throw, but uh, probably a, will make gonna two. He's going to be on an eight-point run. Yeah, yeah. Okay, seven-point run. <laughs> hey, was that not a foul? I'm not sure. Did you see how he pushed him? Well, that should be a technical. The that same also should referees be. Referees from LA Sacramento series. Yeah, what the hell? Like, did you see how he uh, literally that was, pushed that him? That was a foul, and after that, a technical. Should be at least. <laughs> yeah, he pushed him. Oh, yeah, foul. yeah. You can't see it from here that well, but he it's definitely pushed him. And that's okay. A, that's a guarantee. That's why I didn't want to have anything to do with Divac. Like, yeah. I, I'm afraid. Okay, what's going on? What? Yeah, like these players the, are champions. The tensions here. They're making up for their mistakes now. They call a charge on the truth. That's oh, I can hear USA. <laughs> that was a good job denying Ooh. Divac. Ooh, that's a tough shot by Yaric. Yeah, yeah, because the play was broken. Uh -huh. Because the initial idea was to post up Divac, but that was a good job denying. Nowadays, you won't see that happening. Look at how many people are... Um, on the yeah. sidelines. Oh my god. Yeah. Assistant coaches, uh -huh. players. Uh -huh. Now you cannot even celebrate some place. So Andre Miller is the guy to close games, not Baron Davis. Mm. And good switching by Yugoslavia. Who was, who was better at that time, Ouch. actually? Was it Baron Davis? I or think Baron, but Andre had more experience. Mm. Ooh, Reggie Miller, that's his shot. Mm. That's how he earned his money. Was this one and only tournament for George Carl? Do you remember? Ooh. Oh, yeah. there you go. What a three-pointer. Almost a dagger, I would wow. say. Again, Gurovic. So Milan Gurovic killed okay. Ooh, that's a Andre good Miller. Shot. Andre Miller, that's why he was on the court. You were, you were questioning his yeah. presence. Yeah, he was there to shoot threes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Contested threes. 
No, no, but no, now yeah, they just don't. They don't need to foul. Ball. They just need to. Basically, they need to defend. Ooh, Ooh is that offensive foul? foul? Ooh. Looked like offensive foul. It looked like it. Let's see. But that see. wasn't offensive, I don't think. From the oh, that's Gurovic shot. He Guru just killed. That's typical killed the team shots. USA. Paul Pierce did contest the shot. You cannot say anything about the defense. Same here. Just like here, yeah. yeah. Okay, so no replays. Marko Jaric. Was he married to Adriana Lima? Could be, yeah. I think Jaric was one of the wildest Serbian players ever. There should be a ranking, and I think that Jaric should be top three for sure. For sure. Was he in the 2005 uh, squad? Yep. When Jelko was yep. telling... No, that yeah, was a wild squad. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys. Down by three. This is the last possession for you. Wow. Oh, nice what pass. A pass. Okay. Oh, no, not last possession because now they didn't foul, I guess. Thought they were going to go for three. That was three. a nice one. People are missing free throws in this game, so you don't know. Gurovic missed two, I think. The gum is still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so Sir Alex Ferguson of basketball. Okay, since Jaric yeah, is shooting free throws, there was this famous story about uh, Pesic trying you know to implement this fighting spirit uh, spirit in Serbian national team and on the 30th floor of in some Indianapolis hotel in front of the whole team he fell on the floor I mean Pesic started crawling rolling he's he tr tried to show the players how to bite in order to inspire <laughs> them somehow to be you know to, to, to Real fight dogs. on the court so <laughs> yeah yeah. Okay, five seconds, last possession. Oh, they didn't create a good was shot. That Andrew Miller? Andrew Miller, yeah. Oh, my. Okay. The wrong Miller was shooting. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you That's needed the, the other Miller to shoot. <laughs> After thoughts, well, the first thought is, in general, you could uh, say that maybe Team USA was not that good. Maybe they sucked. But after watching the, the game, I can say that Team USA was kind of focused and they didn't play that bad. It's just that Yugoslavia was a really, really tough team. And obviously they had a plan to just hang in there, be close, and maybe then hit in the fourth quarter. And then some some things happened that you cannot predict, like Gurovic erupting mm. in the fourth. There were some tough shots. There were some big shots. And, and, and of course, these um, Serbian players had very strong characters. So after this, I cannot say that this Team USA Indianapolis was bad or they sucked or anything like that. It was just... I think it's like you said, Donatas, before we uh, sat down here, you said this was basically Yugoslavia's or Serbia's and Montenegro dream team. Did this 2002, yeah. basically. They really had a good squad. Probably biggest win, you would say, because after that you said there was a drought of medals, of uh, gold medals. The last biggest win, La I would say, because yeah. they had a really great uh, 90s. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the 21st century, they don't have any gold medals, although... Uh, Olympic silver and World Cup silver yeah. is a big deal mm -hmm. because in these competitions they face the, the real, real team yeah, USA with, yeah. with your Durants and Curries and all the other guys. So they managed to win the final against Argentina. That was a close game, by the mm -hmm. way. On the other side, US went on to play uh, for fifth, fifth place. place game uh, and, and they lost. lost that they one. lost to Spain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. the the Nazis told me before the, before we started watching as well. He said only one thousand people attended that game. So can you imagine in a seventeen thousand arena? But I don't know 1, what was the purpose of playing these five, eight. Maybe it was games. for the World Cup, uh, the for the Olympics. Nope. No, nope. no. Nope. At okay. that time, you would qualify for the Olympics during uh, ah, throughout okay. your yeah. continental competition. So Eurobasket was mm. the qualifier. I think there was some issues with chemistry in this team as well. I read that uh, Paul Pierce was pretty selfish, if you could say, uh, wanted the ball all the time. And even Andre Miller in this game took so many shots that he usually would pass out. Yeah. So there was some kind of ego games going on in the team. And that's why they didn't just glue together, even though the talent, you know, it was enough to, to get to the final, let's say. Well, you know, those were different times and these NBA players sometimes didn't get along. Like today, the NBA seems like one mm. big brotherhood like one big family, and when they get together to play for Team USA, they're brothers. At the time, some of these players treated each other like rivals. You could say that maybe these guys from Boston didn't like guys from Indiana and, and stuff like mm. that. It was not like rivalries between Cervena Zvezda and Partizan, but between some particular player so we'll see very soon with a similar talent level team with the team usa how 
this theory of yours <laughs> no but uh, how, how this works in reality because now we'll see a team that's you know a collection of players that never played together and yeah. we'll, we'll see how that works out in, in the 2023 FIBA World Championship or Cup I don't know how they call they it they want to call it a World Cup now yeah so yeah guys thank you for watching uh, I hope you can suggest some more games we could watch before the World Cup because we would like to do another episode before then uh, let us know in the comments what you would like to see like the video subscribe to the channel also uh, you can win a Nikola Jokic jersey if you get into that first 75,000 subscriber count uh, that we would send to your home thank you for watching and we'll see you next time